So for this, I am going to combine number six and number seven. Number six, John 19, verse 30. When Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This has been called the word of triumph. Very interesting to call it the word of triumph when Jesus is actually dying. Of course, we have the advantage of knowing what happened three years, three days later, rather. But why is this a word of triumph? When Jesus said it is finished, they've told us that the, 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 the Greek translation of that is tetelestai, which is an accounting term. One that says the debt is fully paid. Whatever I owed has been settled. If it is a mortgage, it's been paid up. If it's a car, it's been paid up. If it's whatever, the debt, whatever you owed the person is, is paid. It's, if it's Mashonisa, I don't owe you anymore, I'm free. If it's the bank, it's settled. A stamp is put there. Tell us die. It is finished. And it is very clear what Jesus is saying, and perhaps it's not. But we know that as human beings, it always appears as if our lives are about paying a certain debt that we owe. Every single day of our lives, we've tried it all. You will know the stories of the people of God in the First Testament, the many things that they had to do and we still do today in order to pay for the debt of wrongdoing, of sin, the many sacrifices, the many cattle that had to be killed, the many birds that had to be given in order to deal with the so many things that people did and continued to do. It just appeared as if the price for wrongdoing was just too big, insurmountable. There would be nothing enough, there would be nothing sufficient to erase whatever we have done wrong. And quite a lot of us live with this burden, with the people that we have in our lives, in our relationships, in our situations, in our families, that we always feel as if we have this debt that we will never be able to finish. We will never be able to pay it. And more so, we feel we owe ourselves something. And perhaps this is the God feeling, as I would want to call it, that there's something in us that, that needs to be appeased daily. That's just not enough. No matter what we do, it's not enough to settle this debt that we have. No matter, it's, it's, it's like having this huge interest when you have a loan from a bank and you realize that all you are doing is you are paying on the interest. You have not started paying what you owe. This is what it feels like. And you keep on paying year after year. And you realize after five years that you've paid the interest. Only now are you beginning to pay what you really owe. It's a burden. But at this moment of experiencing and inviting everything unto himself, Jesus then makes a declaration on behalf of humanity. The debt and its interest has been fully paid. So it would appear as if 
There are people who are continuing to pay a debt that was long settled. Our lives become a burden more and more because there are those who continue to remind us that we owe, we owe, we owe, we owe, but Jesus said it is fully paid. And sometimes those individuals are even in our churches. They are our preachers. They are our pastors. They are our priests. They make us feel guilty as if whatever we, 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 we have in Jesus is not complete. But Jesus said on the cross, it is fully paid. Yours is to receive the grace and know that in actual fact, long before I was born, the debt was paid. No one in this life or in the other life can come and tell me that I owe something and therefore unless this and this this happened, I will not be forgiven. No, the blood of Jesus is sufficient to have erased all manner of sin. Mine is to accept that grace, that forgiveness because in Jesus our debt is fully paid. In Jesus, wrongdoing is erased by and with his blood. Completely. There are people who still are bound by the wrongdoing of two, three, four years ago, ten centuries ago. You know, we are held by the sins of our forefathers. We are held by mistakes made 20 years ago. We are held by all sorts of things. But Jesus is saying, it is fully paid. We are still reminded as people of the original sin. We are told, because Adam sinned, it's like this. Jesus said, all that is settled in full. On this Good Friday, I want you to embrace this and say, Whatever it is that I've been struggling with. With Jesus' triumph. I am able to go above what has been pushing me down like an albatross. It's been on my shoulders. Burdening me. But Jesus is saying, it is fully paid. It's, I remove this burden on me. Because I've always felt I needed to do one more thing and one more thing and one more thing. It just never seemed enough. But Jesus, our Savior, says I've carried it all on me. It is finished. And when it is finished, we then move on to what becomes the seventh word. And these we would want to assume are happening at three o'clock simultaneously. And so we move to Luke 23, verse 46, where Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And just as John said, Luke says he breathed his lust. This word which has been called a word of reunion, Jesus being reunited, in this moment with his father. But I want to argue today that when we have received the forgiveness of our sins in the last time, which is John 19.30, the triumph, we are re reunited with God because now as Jesus was confident to give up his spirit to his father, we now also have the confidence to say, God, we come into your presence and we commit ourselves. We commit our being to you. Because quite often we feel as if we, 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 we need to run away from God. What we are doing is we don't feel confident enough to step into the presence of God. But if the debt has been fully paid, it becomes easier to be reunited with God, to be reconciled to God, to commit our spirits to him. In actual fact, I want to argue that so many things are clamoring for our attention. Our very souls are owned by other people. We feel as if we owe people our lives. We feel as if we owe certain individuals our lives. We owe the problems of this life our lives. We, 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 we are not free. But once you know 
that the debt is paid. You take your spirit, you take your being, you take your soul, and you commit that to God and say, from now on, it is God who is in charge of my being and not, not any other person. Nobody else. But I willingly commit my spirit to the source. That's why they call this the seventh word, the word of reunion. Because it's Jesus committing back to the source. As you and I are created in the image of God. The only place where we are safe, where our spirit is safe, where our being is safe, is back with the one who created us. And so, what is it that is taking us away from God? It's all the burdens, the pains of life that we have already said Jesus experienced. All those things have moved us away from the presence of God. But in this moment when we know that how all those things, the pain, the abandonment, the whatever that made me walk away from God, guaranteed, it's all been paid for. You then come back and say, God, I don't need to walk around and feel as if other people are in charge of me. I take my being and give it to God. When everybody else comes and reminds you of what you are or how bad you are, like, listen, you are not in charge anymore. My spirit belongs to God. When in your thoughts, the devil wants to remind you of how unworthy you are, you say, no, it's fully paid. And in actual fact, I don't answer to you. I have committed my being to God. I'm reunited. In Christ Jesus, I'm reconciled to the source. I'm reconciled to the creator. I'm reconciled to this God, this Jesus, who, who made sure that whatever it is that separates people from the love of God is taken care of in full. Do this willingly. You need to say today, if possible, aloud. Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit, I commit my being because the debt is fully paid. This I know because Jesus did it for me. Let us pray. Almighty God, Hear our prayer and look with mercy on this, your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was ready to be betrayed into the hands of sinners, to suffer death on the cross, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. We commit our president, we commit all the presidents and prime ministers, leaders of the world, kings and queens, we commit Zuelim Kize, our Minister of Health, and all other ministers working in the National Command Center, our scientists, our doctors, and all other healthcare workers. We pray for the army, for the police, our security guards, all essential services workers. We pray for our families, for ourselves, that in Jesus we may find one who gives us grace to commit our spirit to God. Whatever may be troubling us, whatever might have separated us from the love of God, today we seek that reunion. We seek that in Jesus we may find the complete forgiveness of sins. We stand at the foot of the cross. We kneel there. We see that in this horror, what was terrible has become good. What was scary has become blessed. This ugly tree has brought good fruit, the fruit of forgiveness. We ask all this through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Amen.